I remember when we used to have sleepovers and like play mummy in the dark and shit. And like, I remember like when you used to tell us that like your room was haunted and shit. And like, I would just be there like, I hope Emily's lying to me because I'm low key like hella sus. That as you and Rachel, Rachel would be like, nah, there's something here. Like, yeah, I was like, I'm afraid to leave your room to go to your bathroom. I don't know. I I feel like there was probably something. It wasn't haunted, but there was probably something. <laughs> A spirit just, you know, lingering around. It's like, let me watch y'all do do your life. Yeah, I mean, I used to be, like, really, like, paranoid about that. Like, I, I honestly can't even watch horror movies to this day. Like, I used to not even be able to watch Harry Potter because Voldemort used to scare the bejesus out of me. Like, as a child, like, I was like, this does not look right. <laughs> I don't blame you, man. This is not hot. But I'm good now. Now I'm just, like, Voldy, Voldy, you know, my man Voldy. <laughs> but before I was like, hell no, nah. demons away from me reject yeah. or do you remember like when like i don't know if it was you but i remember like danielle and like they would all do like the ouija board like pretending to summon like the the underside and i was like y'all are tripping right now like this is not uh, this is uh, not cute that, that was not, I, me. not i had me. a i i had an ex who his mom bought him a spirit board for christmas and he decided to use it in our studio and i was just like son i live here i'm not trying to summon anything exactly like, next thing you know we don't want to uh, go home like why are we inviting exactly. bad juju into the place like let's not nah dog i uh, no no thank you i want friends but not these friends right exactly i'm like i've seen paranormal i know what happens it does not end good for them okay it got to the point where like i remember in the paranormal movies like there was like a specific time like the demon would come out and like i would go to bed and always wake up at that time and i would be like oh my god they're coming for me or like i don't know if you've ever had like those um you know those chain mails that people used to send when we were younger and it was like if you don't share this this demon mickey mouse is gonna come and like kill you in your sleep and i would just like be like this can't be real right like as a kid you're kind of like i feel like this isn't true but just to be safe we're just gonna share it (laughs) let me not take the risk and send this to like 20 people that i don't know and let them send it to other 20 people just so i don't get killed by some uh, woman in the dark Oh no, bro! Whoever came up with hilarious? These I, I know. That, I'm that like, was... why? Why would you send this to children? Like, why? But trolls been trolling from uh, day one. They're still out here, sending, spreading more misinformation. Just actually, since we're since we're on this, I received yes. an email like a few weeks ago, and I. I was stressing, and it was an email in my junk mail, and basically this person was like, uh, oh, I deleted it, but they were basically saying that if I don't give them a certain amount of money, they are going to leak videos of me that they uh, hacked into my phone. They managed to hack into my phone, and they're like, you have a good selection of porn like well uh, we're um, so messed i know up. your password and your email and your name is emily and you need to send it to this bit account and blah blah, blah. and i was just like what the hell what? exactly and i freaked out and i, I'm like, I can and I'm imagine kinda like, i was kind of crying but like thankfully like i have a friend who is into like hacking and i was just like yo can you check this for me yeah is this legit sure this like, is should fun? i be concerned yeah yeah and then he was like nah it's fake and i was just like i was more pissed at the fact that i was like you're asking me for for this amount of money i don't even make that much a month dog like why you you're like why, i can't even you pay have- this who do you think i am like this is the, yeah. i am not a kardashian honey like i don't know what kind of money tree you thinking you're trying to milk right now but like your girl is trying to make bread like yeah i don't know exactly i'm all I always tell my mom, I was like, yo, if someone hacks my account... But this happens a lot. Like, I feel like people spread images of young girls all the time on the island. It's ridiculous. 
Oh, yeah. No. It's either they hack or it's because they receive stuff and then they're like, oh. Let me share share this this. with all my friends. Were you not taught respect and, like, honor and trust? Nope. Nope. I was like, thank thank God this wasn't real. (laughs) Yeah. I'm glad it wasn't real because, like, yeah. You're like, what could they have found? I don't got nothing saved in this boat. Yeah. I totally. I'm lucky. I feel like I've never had someone try to blackmail me like that but it's like for that reason i feel very weary about taking any kind of like slightly promiscuous footage because i'm like there are people out there that would try to use that against you and like try to blackmail you and make you feel bad about it and i feel like it's some a way of like men or society trying to control women's sexuality and make them feel bad about themselves and their bodies and i'm like that is just really really fucked up like i that's trash trash nah, it really is and i guess they do that because they don't like the fact that we take power onto it and they want to grab that power back they'd be like we're gonna put you down yeah but it's like no you can't post this because you think it looks good and you can't make money off of this because blah blah, blah. and then it's like but no let me go and hack your shit and or I'm let trying me to make go you and feel bad yourself about yourself and, and, and shit yeah it's like make it make sense Bro, I swear that has been my phrase for like the past year, two years. Just like make it make sense. Cause I don't know. I feel like, you know, like you were saying, like adulting sucks. And I completely agree. I feel like we've been scammed as kids. Like I felt like when we thought we were growing up, it was kind of like, oh yeah, we're going to have fun and we can just play and do whatever. But then by the time you like get to the freedom and you go back and you're like, okay, now I have time to watch Disney Channel without my parents on my back. It's not the same. Like it's no longer as fun as it was when you were that age. And yeah, no, uh, instead of your parents being on your back, it's uh, either bills, it's uh, school Taxes. or work, tax, all these things, and you're like, I, I really, damn, I just I, wanted I might... to chill. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I just, I just wanted to chill in a, on the beach or <laughs> under a tree, read a book, eat some good food, eat some great, you know. like, you know, not spend my time out <laughs> indoors on a computer or like behind a desk like in a cubicle <laughs> yeah and it's like yeah. it's so weird because like i was like i still like i'm an adult now but i don't look at myself as an adult and then when i like talk to other adults i'm just like how do you do this every day i'm just like yeah. i don't understand i'm like how are y'all just like okay with this shit like do you guys not feel like you got scammed too because i feel like i got scammed yep. <laughs> nope yep one hundred. I'm like, what is this? Like, this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> no, it's not like. How do I cancel my subscription? Is it too late? I mean, like, I want to revert a way to back, cancel it, but it's not the right way. <laughs> like, yeah. No, <laughs> nah. Like my niece, my niece looks at me and she's like, "You're not even twenty three. She's like, you're, you're like you're sixteen. And it's like when I talk I'm trying to, to stay there, like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, uh, again, I'm like, I know I'm, I'm of age, I'm adult, finger quote, adult, but like, I still feel like I'm a kid, I'm a teenager, which never get rid of that because life gets mundane and then you're just going to fall into this like robotic, robotic pattern. Yeah. But like when talking to other adults, I, I like... And then you tell other older people and they're like, yeah, but you're an adult. And I'm like, nah, I'm talking to an uh, adult here, adult. <laughs> like, like you're talking to me. Here. I'm trying to learn. I figure you guys have it all figured out. And it's yeah. funny because like you think like the adults have it figured out and then you talk to them and you realize they're dumber than you. And you're just like, yeah, oh, but- shit, this is not like- good. <laughs> Like, what is going just on? Trying to figure it out. Do we do we all just have our hands in the air? Like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, don't know it seems so. On. It's just like we're kind of all just like I don't know what's going on, but we're we're just trucking through this, I guess, and seeing what happens. But we all don't know what the hell is going on. We're just kind of like, I guess this is it. And I'm just like, no, I refuse to accept this is it. Like, what the hell? Like, yep. you are not going to kill my dreams and aspirations, society. I refuse. I refuse. Oh, hell no. Hell no. I'm going to make it worthwhile. Try to 
fit it all together, but make it worthwhile. I feel you. What it's is like Emily's life. highest self? Like where, 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 what do you like? What is your ideal version of Emily? And like where, where you want to be, where you can live this, like the life that you really, really want to live, not the life that society wants you to live. The life I really, really want to live is do absolutely nothing. <laughs> now, um, but like, I I see myself and what I truly want is just pure freedom, nothing attached to it. Like no no worries of having to pay back the government or the bank or like you know working a job I don't like and then like I don't mind if I work a job that I do enjoy and I make enough to live comfortably I'd rather do that than like work a job which will give me a bunch of money like that's just how I see it for me Mm. I know a lot of people are like oh I'd rather work hard right now like a a ton of hours overtime for when I get older I'm like relaxed and stuff I'm like nah dog but then you're old and then it's like what are you gonna do you know you're old exactly like my ideal life is just I want to live on the beach or somewhere in between. Somewhere tropical. The, somewhere tropical, rainforest type beach. I feel you. I feel like, you. Have my own land, grow food off of that, have a bunch of dogs and like just you live my life. You preaching to the choir. I'm like, sign me up for the commune life. I'm for it. <laughs> Exactly. Let's all let's all, let's all just buy a giant land, and then we can all like grow our like harvest food together. I know. I love. I love the idea of having like that self sustaining lifestyle. Like I agree. That's exact. Like pretty much what I want. Like I want a ton of land so that I can have pretty much like a a jungle that feeds me and it's self sustaining. I don't have to be out there in the fields weeding anything. Like the nature takes care of itself, and I exactly. pretty much yeah have the freedom to be creative and do whatever I want and work with people that want to work with me and like together create stuff that maybe moves people without like that burden of, Oh, I need to pay for rent or I need to make sure I have food to eat or I need to pay, you know, the IRS or, you know, do all this other stuff that I feel like gets in the way of distracting you, but with what life's all about, which is like to live and just be. To just be like, who who came up with this whole ass concept that we're supposed to work nine to five? Actually, in my I think it's Henry five. Ford. I low key I blame Henry Ford just because he created the whole like factory industrial complex, you know, and because of that, like it was no longer like just what people could do. It was like, how do you get people to do as much work in this given amount of time? And then pretty much like all of our laws and everything went to support that idea of the factory. And that's pretty much where we're at now. You know, we're still living in that framework. Yeah. And it's like, how do we get out of that? It's a bit... (laughs) we've gone a bit too far how do we go back now exactly right i'm like okay i see what we were trying to do here and like this is cute and all but at some point like i was like watching this one video and it was like now the scare like people will never run out of yoga pants because we have so many yoga pants in so many different stores (laughs) all over the world and i'm like is that really what we should be focusing on as like a community like making sure that every yogi has a good pair of yoga pants i'm like shouldn't we be trying to maybe work on like our collective enlightenment you know like the collective spiritual journey like because having enough yoga pants is cool and all but like what is the world really gonna change if uh someone decides to come up with a new brand of yoga pants like nobody really cares you know if there's another brand of toothpaste (laughs) nobody really cares but i think Like, we should be trying to be better people, like, more aware people, more reflective people, more enlightened, you know. But it's annoying. It's so annoying. It it truly is. And you can't, but the thing is, like, you can't even, uh, like, grab people and shake them and be like, wake up! (laughs) Because then they don't understand. Like, they really don't understand. And it's hard for me looking at adults that have given up on themselves because I'm like, damn. I'm like, damn. I'm just like, damn. Like, I feel bad for you. Like, I want you to realize, like, there's more to this life than what you're seeing. And you're giving up on it already. And I'm like, 
you shouldn't be giving up. Like you should be fighting every day for this future. But yep. then you get complacent and you have bills and it just weighs you down and you're like But you gotta remind yourself. I guess this like, is it. No, nah, no, exactly. this is it, but you just gotta remind yourself that like you can't make people see your point or your views. You can just say it and go on about your day because in a way that's just planting the seed true and what they do with that seed it either it either gets watered and then they grow from it or it just doesn't get watered and nothing happens i feel, I feel. <laughs> and i like to think that most people the seed ends up blooming at some point it will click for them yeah sooner, that's true that's one one later. can only hope exactly I guess, like, when was the seed planted for you? Like, when did you realize, like, hold up, something is off here? Dude, 100%, I would say, like, officially last year and during quarantine. And I think what, like, already, like, growing up, I was always very much, like, rebellious and, like, fuck society fuck yeah, these for rules sure. like all my report cards you were the only like, one that could stand up to the teacher and curse them in front know? of everybody and not even be phased like i would just be like you no. go girl like damn i wish i could say that to their face right now now i probably i'm like i i'm like i'm not gonna take shit like take out my shit on people but like i'm not also gonna take your shit but like yeah nah like i just i would say like from young just always rebellious and my mom said like i'm free-spirited i don't care about like what other people think or what i do i just go and i do it because like i want to and it's like yeah um i guess last year officially during um quarantine not quarantine but like lockdown we're all like stuck in our house and it's like we're stuck with ourselves and it's like and that I found that was like the best time to like officially like have the time for yourself and to go into yourself and like figure out your shit and I would say I think what fully triggered it is um I went down the rabbit hole and I went into a lot of conspiracy theories and Girl. I was driving myself a little bit cray with I that. love the conspiracies like, they do you can't go too deep because then it really be hard to come back and like look at people and be like and you're like, no, oh. y'all are fucked. <laughs> I'm like, I can't support this. I I can't watch this. I can't do this. And it's like, it's because like I want to be supporting all of you. Uh, and it's like, but then then you're like, I'm also contributing into it because it's like I work for the man, and it's like I need to make money, but it's like I can't just stop because I need like, how am I gonna live? And I was, I had to stop at some point because I was I like, "Fuck, you. this is a lot." People are thinking I'm crazy. My parents were you. like, "You better." <laughs> Emily, my, my, can you my... like relax? Are you becoming a QAnon? <laughs> yeah, that was my dad. My dad's like, "Stop listening Emily, to QAnon." Emily, please. I was like, "I was like, bro, I'm not listening to QAnon." Like, I was like, "I don't want anything to do with to them. do with them." But. Um, but there is right. some such shit that we need to address in what they're exactly. talking about. Like, I'm like, exactly. I, I always tell people, I was like, look, question everything. Everything. Don't follow what you're told blindly. Exactly. But exactly. You can, think like, for yourself. If, like, exactly. Think. Just think. Just don't go with it. Like, they're holding, like, just basically like pigs to the slaughter, to the slaughterhouse. Like, try to escape from it, and it's just like, you know, figure it out. See it for for the big picture. I'm always telling people I don't believe 100% everything. I, will, I try to stay um, unbiased in the middle because I'm like, you never know. I'm not going to go 100% believe this conspiracy, but I'm also not going to be like, this doesn't exist. It's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's there's a, it's a the possibility. possibility. Exactly. It's just to to know that, like, I don't know. It's just to keep your mind open. But at the end of the day, we should not drive ourselves crazy on negative stuff. 
Yeah. Uh, we should look into it, learn about it, but then, you know, don't attach ourselves onto that because that is, yeah. that is not good for our frequency. Like, that's just not yeah. going to help us r- rise up. Like, I feel. Yeah. Okay, Emily's <laughs> rant for the day about conspiracy theories. We oh, didn't trust go me. We haven't it, but... even, I, we haven't even, I'm still going to ask you which ones because now I want to know which ones you've been like reading about because I feel you. I went down the similar rabbit hole and my dad was like, I was definitely that kid that was on the phone like dad they're they're harvesting the blood of children and like they're using it to make this drug to make them live long and like my dad is like Arsha what are you talking about I'm like dad I'm telling you (laughs) all of these rich people are into fucking little children and it is not okay and like Epstein and like R. Kelly and Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cott this is just the tip of the iceberg I'm like daddy Daddy, these people, this is not just an American issue. Like, this is a global, international Earth issue. And, like, the fact that this stuff still is going on today, that as we speak, there are little girls being trafficked all over the world to be the possession of some sick, sick man, okay, or woman, who knows, because there's sick people on both sides. Like, that is the problem. And, oof, like, I feel you. I'm like, all of, I'm like, I'm like, clean the swamp, clear it. I'm like, I want to know. Because like, even with the Epstein thing, I'm just like, they are pretending like people are trying to forget like this whole thing happened. And I'm like, no, no, I refuse to forget. Like, what the hell? Like, we still don't even know the full story. And we still don't even know how many girls he screwed up and how many other rich people were involved. Because we all know there were many, many people going to that man's island. And it's not a coincidence that he just, died in prison like let's be okay nope Uh -uh. and somehow an assassin went after the judge like i'm just like all of this is hella i I don't trust but i don't trust none of them okay i don't trust any of them i think they're all gross all of ugh ugh and it's so sad because it's like a lot of the people that we hold up in high esteem are involved in this shit and the thing is we don't know know. who they are and they're walking around like they're innocent like they haven't done anything wrong just because they haven't been caught yet and i'm waiting i am waiting for them to oh i need that list to be leaked (sighs) but i feel like if this thing comes to light it would destroy everything that we know and that is why they're trying to keep it a secret like i'm oof yeah well, in in a sense, like they are trying to keep it a secret, but like something I learned was that I I don't even know um exactly what word to use, but like they have to give up some form of truth. It's it's kind of just this this law thing, um that they do have to give us a, a bit of truth, and they do it within music, they do it within artwork, they do it within expression. Like R. Kelly's and TV music shows. was literally all about sex. And he was a yeah. pedophile. Or like, okay, take um, uh, Squid Game, for example. Since everyone's talking about Squid Game, it's it's upset. Um, I looked into it and I was thinking about it. I'm like, there's no doubt. Like, they're showing us this. But like, actually sit there and think about it. There's like, what, like exactly. There are people out there with that, significant debt. Who's to say there isn't some rich people out there that have this, this weird shit. game going like, on? Don't quote me on this, um, because I need to go back and check check the check check my facts on this. But I remember last year, I believe it's called Black Force in Germany. Yes, Ooh, yes, yes. I've heard about yeah, that. The whole the whole thing about Black Force in Germany, people were being hunted and fucking shot and killed for as a, as game as game. And usually these are people either being kidnapped, trafficked, all that. And you know what's fucked? Or really poor, I, and they don't have anybody. Or, Anything to exactly, but you know what's fucked? After we got let out from lockdown, the first thing I did was I went to the movies and I watched a movie. Cannot remember the name of it for the life of me. And the movie was about these rich people taking other people, like whether it was Trump supporters, it was racist, it was conservatives, it was just religious people poor people, uh, they would take them 
and they flew them out to this forest and they put them in this forest for these other rich people to go ahead and hunt them. And, and you know why I like, do I was... believe this is true? Because like in Squid Game, when he asked the old dude, like, why did you do it? His response was, oh, I'm so rich. I'm bored. And so the only way to make this fun for me is I have to have you guys kill each other because that's entertaining. I yeah, was you like, guys are, what? You're the racing horses for us rich people. Exactly. Um, sir? So it's like, no like, doubt. They don't even look at people as happening. people. Yeah, exactly. They no. just look at them as like a bet, you know? And like, bro. And even in the game, like, like the old dude was like trying to, you know, sleep with the server. And like, to me, that's an analogy to sex trafficking. Like that is literally yes. sex trafficking. The, like, the what women the hell? standing there in, in body paint. Oh, speaking about the VIPs though, they were wearing these gold masks and I ended up coming across this post. Someone pointed out that this looks familiar. A Rockefeller uh, dinner from back in the 90s where they all wore fucking masquerade masks that were very extravagant and gold. And at that dinner, on the tables, they had, like, ba- like toy babies everywhere, the parts broken Sick. up. They had um, people laying there, their bodies, and, like, food all on that. I'm like... I know they have had like even like more recently they have like celebrity dinners with themes like that don't they there was one where it was like an art exhibit spirit cooking yeah exactly exactly uh, uh, Marina Abramovic yeah exactly but she says she's not into it but I know yeah she yeah it's very controversial her because she says she's not doing anything sketch but the art looked very sus to me right I'm like uh ma'am I'm like this (laughs) is very dark like I mean human expression but still dark okay exactly. I, I mean i, I, I honestly mean, hope that sex trafficking is not real i hope people aren't selling children and like using them if, you know for pleasure but in the world we live in i've seen too much evidence that points in the other direction so i'm just like yeah. mm, mm, yeah. mm. it just makes me so uncomfortable and at least now i understand why my parents were so protective of me and it's like i appreciate them being so protective because even on St. Martin, they got perverts. So it's like nowhere is safe. Oh, cu- Ooh, no, no. Bro, speaking about this shit, um, I I tend to have conversations with friends. And like mm. everyone's like, oh, you're so much like you're so much uh, about age. Like um, you're so much about age. I'm like, what do you like? What do you mean? They're like, but why are you so focused on age? And it's like I because, OK. I uh, I don't know how to say this. Cause no, like, go ahead. Just express <laughs> yourself as you think. You know, it's it's totally fine. I'm not judging you. <laughs> the guy I'm currently dating is 20, and like I'm 23, and um, I like he and he has some friends that are like, you're so much about age. I'm like, but you don't see it because you're a guy. You don't see yeah. it. I'm like, you're you're very like. I keep telling them. I'm like. Um, why, why would you fuck with girls who are underage? I think it's for them. It's like, like they have, I feel like men have the pressure to be sexually active as soon as possible because it's like a, a a credibility thing on the street. You know what I mean? To say like, oh, you are sexually active. But it was more of like, um, in SM, like, I grew up in high school and I knew girls who were like seeing like 20 year olds and you're fucking 16. And it's like, we all saw that as like, oh That's my okay. God, we have a, oh yeah, it's okay. And now, and now that I'm older and I hear like my, like I have friends that are underage, but they're just friends. And like, I literally just see them as kids and I'm their like babysitter. No, no, I don't. But like, that, and, I'm, and I explain to them and I'm like, they're all it's always the boys that are like you're so stuck on age and i'm like but you don't understand i'm like i'm like you're 16 what are you doing trying to date a 22 year old like it doesn't matter if that 22 year old likes you it doesn't matter if you if are cool, mature if they're popular or they're it cool, does not matter or whatever that is still pedophilia 
feel ya. And, and it's like, why some... can't they date someone their age? You know what I mean? Like, why are exactly. they why are they coming to your school? Like, why are they trying to flirt with kids that are your friend's age? Like, that's hella sus. Exactly. And I feel like that's such a big thing on this island that, like, or just everywhere, but especially on SM, that, like, people don't understand. Yeah, it's they like, don't think doesn't... that there's anything wrong with it. They're like, well, if she's consenting, that that's good enough. Oh, Which well, is like, okay, yeah, yeah, she is consenting. But you also have to understand, when you're that young, you're also not, you don't know anything. You're just, you know, following You're, you're learning the crowd. as you go. Exactly. But this, and so this isn't you the make way decisions. you want to learn. Exactly. You make decisions that you don't even know if these are the right decisions for you. You're just operating based off exactly the little limited lifespan you've had. And older people can take advantage of that because they know more than you. So they know how to manipulate you because they know you're young and you're vulnerable and you don't know any better. And you think like, oh, this will make you cool and so and so. But it's like, no, he's just using you. Exactly. And then by the time that you reach like in your 20s, you're like, and you look back Shit. and you're like, oh, fuck. What <laughs> I did I do? Groomed. I yeah, was exactly. manipulated. I did some messed up things. Like, I look back at when I was young and I was like, I did a lot of messed up things. And I'm like, uh. So every time I come around other young people, I was like, yo, stop trying to grow up so quick. Enjoy what you have Trust right me, you now. Got because time. Like, you, you have, this is the best time of your life. Stop trying to grow up. Like, but when you're that age, honestly, you don't really it. realize it. You're just like, what are you talking about? Like, you're older, you yeah. can drive, you can go out, you, your parents don't have to tell you anything. But honestly, I would rather have to deal with my parents telling me stuff, but at least I eat and I live for free. And I can, right? you know, like, do whatever. <laughs> and just watch TV and not have homework on the weekends. Like, that was a good time. You know, that was a very, very it, good time. It really was. If Under, could, underestimated. Still go back. Still go back to it. Right? I would be like, gladly. I was fed four times a day for free. I never had to worry about food. The food was always good. Like, all I had to do was do some homework. Bro, easy but peasy. Let me sign me up. Take the time machine and teleport. But, yeah, it is It is interesting. And sometimes I look back and I'm like, damn, like, I really was just, you know, an ignorant little kid that didn't know any better. But also, it's just like, now, knowing how nasty the world is, I'm just like, damn, bro. How am I supposed to bring a kid into this? I'm like, y'all are all right? psychos. Like, I don't know. Why are we still making more humans? I'm not really sure. Like, we need to deal with the messed up ones we got right now. Like, yeah. Again, and this is why I want to live somewhere away from everything. I know, so right? I'm a remote like, island. Just, I, yep. I feel you. Just I feel go you. off grid. I feel oh, you a hundred percent. Like I, I love civilization, but I also can't stand people just because like I'm always concerned about this stuff. I'm like, we live in this, like we live in this world that we think is like this way, but it's all made up of like human ideas that are human. You know, like they're not the truth, mm-hmm. and yet we like blind ourselves and think like, well, this is what I was taught. These are the labels that I know, so this must be how the world works. And I'm like, sweetie. We don't know how the world works. Like, <laughs> I, I hear me here. Like, the scientists, all of them, we are trying our best, okay? But we don't know, okay? So everything that we're telling you, everything you've been taught, everything, all the systems, everything, all the laws are based to support old ideas. But again, yeah. we don't know. Like, we're just hoping that this is correct. Yeah. We don't know. Because there's no one we can ask. Like, the only other people we can ask is ourselves. Like, there's not like God's going to come on down and be like, scientist, this is actually what is COVID. You know what I mean? And this is what you should do about COVID. Like, nobody's going to come down and tell us. Like, we got to figure it out. If you look at it, the answers are all within us. We just got to. Exactly. They are within us. It's it's funny you brought up the old, like, um, Speaking about like scientists and that like we've been like we're going off of old things. Um, I'm reading this book called The Soul of an Octopus and a, a surprising exploration into the wonder of consciousness. And it's like I'm not like I'm only on page 79. Like I'm getting there, but like the minute I read this, and I remember I think back in August I was with um, a 
yeah, the guy I was, I'm dating, like, speaking to a te- his teacher. And she brought up, like, the whole idea, like, of animals and consciousness. Mm. And I'm a full-on believer that animals do have consciousness. Same. Same. Because, exactly. Like, if you who, look at who them. Are, who are, yeah, look at that. Who are we to say that animals do not have consciousness? What, because they do. of these they scientists do. and philosophers said that, like, they they don't like we cannot compare human consciousness to animal consciousness because it's, it's too completely it's a different, different things, it's a different the exactly the, the, exactly and i'm like it's wild it's wild to like think about it i'm like octopuses which everyone i don't know if Octopi. everyone but like, it's not it's actually not octopi it's octopuses which is like crazy really? why is it not octopi yeah it is <laughs> I swear yeah. I was told it's not octopuses, it's octopi. And you're like, Harsha, they've been lying to you. It's not the octopi, yeah, they, it's the they've octopuses. Been lying to you in the, they talk about it in the book. She's like, I thought it was octopi this whole time. It's octopuses. I'm it like, is. I just weird. looked it up. It is octopuses. Wow. You see? <laughs> we have all been led astray. But, but like, I think it's just wild like that we're so much like, Humans are cocky, um, is what it is. Yeah, humans are so cocky, and it's like we're like we like we're very cocky and egotistical because that's very, ego speaking. We're not speaking very. from like a con- actual consciousness. No, we're it's speaking just from ego. ego, and and then that's why we're like, yeah, animals are dumb. They can't do what we can do. Who the fuck said what? They because the to. scientists twenty, forty years ago said that like animals can't do this, like. But I mean, it's like, I'm who's pre- to say they wanted to? Maybe they know better. Maybe they know we're not supposed to be doing all this extra shit. And that's why, you know, dolphins are out there just hunting their fishies and minding their own damn business. Like, we Getting should be doing. Getting high puffer fish. Exactly. <laughs> but for us, it should be the toad, you know, not a puffer yeah. fish. We got to toad it up, you know. Yeah. I'm like, this, this shit is wild. I'm like, and here we are. Here we are. Just like confused like, and I, lost, I want, thinking we run things. Yeah, I'm like, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna know what happens in a animal's brain, like consciousness. I wanna connect with them because I wanna figure out, like, bro. Exactly. <laughs> tell I'm me like, what do y'all know? Would help. Like, can you tell me what you guys know? Because I know you guys know stuff, and it's just like, yeah, human ego. That's like, oh, animals are dumb. I literally look out my window and watch these birds, and they are clearly. Like, I feel like thinking, you know what I mean? They can see what's around them. They're clearly, they know what they're doing. It's not like they're just chirp chirping just for the heck of it. Like, they know exactly what they are doing. They They're have aware emotions. of us. They can they, see they us. They have thought process. They, like, they can full on do this. They have preferences. Like, okay. Wait. Sorry, Mom, if you are listening to this. But, like, you know, a girl, a girl does ex- experimental things. Uh... <laughs> I took ecstasy for the first time, and when I mm. took it, like, I was always afraid of taking it because I didn't know how I would react. And when I took it, and I felt the come up, dude, I was petting my dogs, and petting them was the most beautiful thing ever. And to be able to, it, like... It, 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 it amplifies, as, like, your sensory experience, right? Yeah, it does. But it, it was as if... I was like, the thing is, I already feel people's energies and it can mm. be a lot like with yeah. like, just on a daily basis. It's a lot. It's draining. And I like can feel like trees or like just every living thing. And um, but to be able to like pet my dogs and just look at them. And I was just like, it's as if like I can actually hear them. And what made me sad is like one of my dogs, I'm like, I know she's depressed. And I'm like, I feel bad because it's like, I'm like, I don't know what else to do. I'm like, I'm sorry. And it, and it hurt me. And I was like, but I'm like, it's the thought that like, I took this and the ability, like it amplified my ability to feel it and to feel like, the emotions and the like i guess thoughts of yeah. my animals was like i'm like wow it's a different conscious what? state for sure yeah exactly it, it, it is and the same like i was looking at the trees and i was like yo these trees are beautiful i'm like they are singing <laughs> well i'm like i don't know 
I was like, I want to hug y'all, even though I hug you sober. I'm like, I want to hug you guys. And it's it's interesting because it's like, I feel like at least when I'm out in nature, the trees are healing me. Like when I'm out in nature and I'm amongst like the vegetation, like I, like even when I take a shower, like I feel better as a result of going through that. And it's interesting because a lot of it is energy and a lot of it is like, how is your feel? How is your, your frequency? And I think for most people, like, we live in this world, especially now that's full of like processed foods and like sugar and like alcohol and all of these things that kind of take away from your energy that like I think mm-hmm. for a lot of people like our frequency is sh- shifted. Like it's not. Yeah. We're not necessarily in perfect alignment with what it what would be the best state for I think a human being and like we see that manifest its way with people suffering from mental health and people having allergies and people not being able to understand themselves and being you know very emotional and not very you know reflective and it it, it's just like when are you going to notice like hey guys like clearly what we're doing is fucking us up but like you said, you you have an experience where you take a drug like ecstasy. I've never taken ecstasy. I can't do pills. It's a struggle. I, I feel like I'm going to be that old woman in the nursing home that, like, <laughs> smacks the pill tray and is like, take this shit away from me. But yeah, it's they're, interesting. They're going to have to try and, like, hide it in something to try I don't know, man. You. They're going to have to drug me because I'm going to go down with a fight. I already know. But it's just, like, interesting when people, like, when I talk to people that have tried different, you know, substances, whether it be psychedelics or, yeah, like, um, ecstasy or even, like, um, people, like, who will take ketamine or, like, um, MDMA. And, like, when they describe the experiences that they have, they're not the same thing as people that, like, are alcoholics or, like, you know, do meth and, like, do heroin mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It's a completely different consciousness state. But it has the potential to teach you a lot about your individual experience and also how we connect to other people. Because for me, I reached the point where I realized, like, we're all energy. You know, we're all the same oh, yeah. thing. We just have different faces. You know what I mean? And we're all a part of the same, you know, universal intelligence that creates all of this awesome shit in this matrix that we live in, that we call reality. And I think for most people, like, you don't, like, we don't, People are so like anti anything that changes your conscious experience or like yeah. how you look at reality that there's so much fear around a lot of this stuff that like if someone heard you saying like, oh, you took ecstasy and it made you have this deep connection with your dog, they would be like, Emily's a drug addict. Oh, my God, yeah. send her help. And it's like she doesn't need help. Like she's perfectly fine. She's a functioning human being. She's able to have perfectly, you know, legitimate, logical conversations. But she was also able to experience this shift in consciousness that allowed her to learn more about herself. And that shouldn't be yeah. a negative thing. Yeah, it, it really, like, it shouldn't be a negative thing. Of course, you should take things with uh, caution. Yeah, do research. Because it can become something um, negative. Exactly. But, like, I find in most cases, it it can be a positive thing. Like, I've done the research. I remember being in primary school or, like, in middle school, in high school, doing a bunch of research and that they they did use, like, a lot of MDMA or Yeah, they use it for depression um, and anxiety and stuff. To treat depression. And the same with, like, shrooms and LSD. A lot of microdosing to, like, help help people heal from it and get better. And so many people, like, it, it helps them. It really and it's like does again, help like you need to just do it within um within in a setting caution, that makes you caution. feel comfortable, yeah, and with caution. And I think exactly. it's interesting, like what people need to realize is everyone's experience is different because everybody's different. And so you can't just take like to say like drugs are bad is I think a very like a generalized statement. I I think drugs aren't necessarily bad. It's more of like who does them and in the context in which they do them. You know, if you're late at night and you've drank a lot and now you're popping Vicodin it's probably not a good idea you probably shouldn't do that you know you'll probably kill somebody but if you're in your house and you take shrooms and you go for a hike like that's not really hurting anybody and you might learn something about yourself but yeah it's interesting I think now at least in the states there's a lot of like studies on like ketamine and MDMA and ecstasy and shrooms and acid on like improving your mental state and also like being helping like stimulate creativity or like helping um 
I don't know, people have like these really deep experiences that help them, whether it be overcome addiction or even just help them deal with like their mental anguish. It really, I don't know. It really has to do with just like everything, um, what your brain produces. And so I guess if you lack certain of those things and when you take it, it just kind of produces it. So it, it's like a helping hand. Like here. Yeah. And it's interesting because drugs, they only stimulate like the, the trigger in your mind. So it's like at the end of the day, it's like our brains have the capacity to induce these states. You know, the drug is just being the trigger, but there are many other ways you can trigger these states that don't even involve drugs. Like people, I don't know if you've heard about this, but there are like people like Wim Hof who like do breathing exercises and they oh, can yeah. like trigger all sorts of like really, really cool, like altered states yeah, of consciousness. You, you trigger the DMT in your brain because we all have DMT without like within in our, our, pituitary. our like, exactly. And like, it's just within breathing uh, techniques and, that we're like, able that's to insane like it. to trigger a dmt experience by just breathing is like a whole nother level of human like to me they that's a superhero like what the hell like how did how did you do that like how that's incredible but the fact that someone me. can do it <laughs> i'm just like why isn't that something everybody's striving towards because i'm like if this is something that we're capable of doing like this is literally a part of our biology but we're purposefully not exercising that. It's like, why not exercise that muscle? Like, it's there. Clearly, yeah. it's got something to teach us, right? I don't know. Like, why else would we have DMT in our pituitary if it's not meant to teach us anything? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question, though. Like, I guess because a lot of people, they're not entirely open to it. Or again, like, I find just like, we're all just... Not all, but like majority of people are just blinded to it, and then it's like when they're offered this like experience I guess, proof or experience, they're like, nah, nah. Direct work. I already breathe. It's yeah, okay. That's like, enough for me. I know and what the like, reality is. Like this is my reality. I'm comfortable with this. I'm comfortable with yeah. knocking on the table and it being solid. You know, I'm comfortable with seeing the tree as a tree. And it not singing to me, you know what I mean? Like yeah. people are comfortable like, okay, with sim number how four. they are. Like, yeah. <laughs> sim number four, you stay over there, <laughs> living your life with your with your baby. I pray for humanity. I'm always like, I want the best for us. Like I want us all to be free, like you said. Like I want us all to wake yeah. the hell up and realize, like humans, fellow humans, we can change this. Like, it is There's possible. more to it than just this. We're literally a floating rock in space. A floating rock and in space. I love worrying. to make that analogy. I know. I'm like, why are I, we worrying about bills? Like, can we? Like, I'm still shook. I'm like, guys, you, I'm like, how are we not more shooketh by the fact that we're a mo- we're on a floating marble in space? I'm like, that alone. Like, it's how crazy. do you? not wake up at 3 a.m. and thinking what am I saying how are you not up at 3 a.m. thinking about this <laughs> like, I don't know man this is what, when I'm stressed sometimes or like I'm major anxiety like anxiety is hitting me I sit there sometimes and I remind myself like do you know who you are do you know how much power you hold within you I'm a like, miracle. you're literally living, like, you're a miracle, you're, li- I'm literally living, living my own life, this is literally my own movie, I'm on a floating rock, why am I worrying about this person, why am I worrying about this, why am I, I'm like, yeah, because guess what, in like five years, I might not even remember this, in five years, I might not, it might not even be important to me, so it's like, why? Why waste all that I mean, stress? I important. And- I- yeah. In the now, it might be important but... right now, but like, <laughs> I feel you. I feel like, you. Everybody, read the book "The Power of Now" by Eckhart Tolle. Yeah, it's good. It's I good feel like book. I personally struggle with like. I feel like I'm definitely one of those people that lives too much in the future, and so I feel like because Same. I live too much in the future, I get a lot of anxiety. Like I kid you not, like yeah. I will get anxious to the point where I can't sleep because I have to wake up at five thirty for hot yoga in the morning, like. And to the point where I had to stop 
taking 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. yoga because it was giving me so much anxiety just to go to sleep and wake up the next day that like I didn't sleep well. And so like it like completely ruined the point of me going to have yoga in the first place because I wasn't enjoying myself. But I agree. It's hard, though. It's so hard to live in the now. Like it is hard to live in this moment as it's happening because it's so like we're so much convinced to plan for the future or you're so obsessed with something you said in the past or something you did in the past then it's like constantly going back between those two and then forgetting like as you're going back between those two you're missing right now like you're missing it right now like it's gone you'll never have that time back yeah but you got to remind yourself not to beat yourself up for like living too much in the past or too much in the future because then that's just like adding to it more fuel to the fire it is like (laughs) you gotta relax and then that's when you smoke weed and it makes it all melt away and it's like okay now we're good again i don't know man when i smoke weed i get hella anxiety now It's like, let me think about everything I've done wrong. And let me think about what could happen. This is why it's different for every person. Exactly. But that's why it's good to have conversations. Because then you see like, okay, weed might be good for some people. And it may not be good for other people. And that's okay. Like, that is totally okay. Like, that is a legit experience. Like, not everybody needs to be a pothead. Just like not everybody needs to be an alcoholic. Like, live the life that works best for you. Exactly. As a former uh, major pothead for very, for almost 10 years. <laughs> Yo, that's long. That's long. I'm like, <laughs> weed does wonders. But it works differently for everyone. It's just, yeah. like, it's just trial and error. With everything in life, everything is trial and error. You're not going to know unless you try. This is You're the not going to know. Exactly. Like, you're really not going to know. It's like, go ahead, do it. Just don't. Like, my mom always tells me. My mom says, do whatever makes you happy as, um, as long as you are not harming yourself and others. Mm. And that's something I stick to a lot. It's like, do whatever the fuck you want. I don't know if I'm supposed to be cursing on this. No, you can't. I curse all the time. Don't okay. worry. Okay, so, like, do whatever the fuck you want as long as you are not harming yourself and others. Like, yeah. that's it. I agree. I feel like that's that it. should be the mantra for all humans. Like, do whatever the fuck you want. As long as you're not hurting yourself or anybody else, who cares? Like, who should care? Like, nobody should care how you're living your life as long as it's not bothering me and it ain't hurting nobody else. Like, I personally could care less. That's why I don't get racist. I don't get homophobes. I don't even yep. get people that are transphobic. I'm like, who cares? Let the people live their yep. life. It's not bothering you. If they want to live that way, let them live that way. It has nothing to do with you. Like, let it be. Like we said earlier, make it make sense with those people. <laughs> make it make sense. But you know what? No, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Like- I'm going to keep on trucking. You can live a life full of misery and stress and anxiety and, and hate hatred and attacking people. I'm going to go with Emily being my little commune island and be growing crops and singing Kumbaya. I you love know? everybody. Exactly. Just, love Just everybody. living life. And it's like, guess what? The person you gave hate to, they're going to get love for me 10 times more. Exactly. Because- yeah. yeah. Exactly. Fuck you. Exactly. Exactly. Fuck you. Oh, this is this is interesting. It's like it's just a normal conversation. I was like worried about like what to do or what to say, and I am like, like it's not fun. no reason to be stressed. It's like you're talking to your homie. Like we've been friends yeah, for I, ever. Like we literally yeah. grew up in the same neighborhood. Like, bro. I'm like, I know, I feel you, though. I feel you. Like, I even, too, get anxious sometimes. I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm going to say to them. I don't don't know. But then the conversation happens. And for me, like, what I love about the podcast is, like, it makes me feel good to be able to talk to, like, you and, like, other folks and just have, like, a genuine, real conversation. Like, it makes me feel like my highest self, you know? Like, I feel like a good person because... When I get to connect with you, I get to share this with you. And hopefully, like, by us having this conversation, it helps somebody else maybe see the world a little bit differently than what they 
seen before, you know? And maybe they learn more about me. They'll learn more about you. Maybe they'll be like, who is this Emily chick? She sounds dope as fuck. Let me, let me go follow her, you know? And to me, it's like, because I know we're all the same and like, I know we're all just different humans having different human experiences. And it's such a miracle to be alive and to be on this planet in the same timeline, mind you, you know? Like, we not only get to be alive, but we get to share this now together. And for me, like, that is so beautiful. And, like, that is something such worth treasuring that I want people to wake up. I want people to realize and grow and be their best self. Because I feel like if we're all our best selves, then there's no room for hate. Because all we can do is love each other. That that'll all, I mean... And I know there are evil people out there that might want to hunt people in the woods, but hopefully if there's yeah. enough people that are out there loving and are like openly just vulnerably authentic and willing to have hard conversations in the pursuit of love and positivity and like trying to grow and learn, the world will be a better place. For sure. Harsh That's all I hope for. Facts. I'm just trying to, you know, facts. because I feel like I, I hate to see like adults that are just like, like they gave up on themselves and they're yeah. just miserable. Like that breaks my heart because now that you're no, miserable, it, 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 you finna really make my does. life difficult. You know? <laughs> it either makes your life difficult or you're just still like, bro. Why are you a baby like donor? This? Exactly. <laughs> like, dude, uh, this I, is just a bank. Uh, the banking the institution is a people. facade. Why are you making my life difficult just because someone crushed your dreams, son? Like, why? 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 It's like when older people say, I'm old, I don't have it. And it's like, nah, dog. You're not it's this old. Meat suit. It's this meat suit you are wearing that is yes. old. But like, you, you are not old. Have so much to learn and do. And give. Exactly. <laughs> and give and like, and just live, bro. Like, if you didn't get to do what you wanted as a kid or as young, do it now. Fuck it. Exactly. Do it now. There's nothing stopping you, like, other than your own limiting beliefs about yourself. And that's the other thing. Like, it's so hard, I think, for people to realize, like, what limiting beliefs they have about themselves. And it gets so much harder, I think, as you get older because, like, your brain just wants to operate in this certain framework instead of constantly dismantling the framework to improve it, to make you better. You know, it's just let me stick to what I know because this is what I This is what I know. But that 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 but that falls into like people want the easy way out and like being negative is so much easier than like trying to be our best self because that's constant work and that's why like i remember one i one day i just looked at myself and i was like i'm sick and tired of being depressed and being a bitch to everyone and being angry and i'm like what is this doing for me and i'm like fuck this and i was like it's tiring yeah to do the work to be better but it's like i feel so, like you feel so but that gives you end. purpose like, you know like that gives you is, purpose yeah. Like, even though I'm doing better, yeah, it doesn't mean that I'm still not depressed or I don't get depressed or I don't get anxiety. But it's, like, at least now, rather than fighting it and, like, saying, like, oh, well, this is it. I'm going to stay in bed all day and not do anything. Like, I, like, it's okay if you do it. But, like, at some point, you need to push yourself to get up and it's, like, hey, fuck this. Like, there's so much more better. There's so much better things in life to do like there's so much better things within me that I can learn and I can do and like achieve and it's like and even if you don't achieve it it's okay because you'll achieve it you'll achieve it in another way or maybe like you were just meant to fail at something for it to teach you something about yourself and learn that like I'm not supposed to go this way I'm supposed to go that way and it's like precisely precisely like it's all again a learning experience it's yeah good. it it's is it's just experience. a learning like we're all learning together all of us well non non-stop learning <laughs> you, you exactly. thought once we finish school we stop learning no we don't we it's learn a about life now thing. it's a lifelong <laughs> journey like yeah school was just the tip of the iceberg folks it doesn't end it really does not end but i guess like 
as someone like that does experience anxiety, how do you deal with it? Like, how do you, because like, I feel like lately I've been getting more anxious and I don't know, like sometimes what is the best way? Because as much as I know, it's like, okay, it's me and it's my mindset and I'm creating these fears or worries. Like, how do you get to a state where it doesn't like, or at least you have better control over it or like understanding over. what causes the anxiety? That's are you also like, I'm question. figuring it out? <laughs> I'm, I'm still in the, I'm still figuring it out myself. Like, I know that there's like certain periods of time where I'll like be super anxious to the point where I'm like, I cannot function whatsoever. But that's if I leave it fester up and I'm just like instead of trying to deal with it I'm like nah and then try to sweep it under the rug and then it's like it builds up and then it's like boom I can't even go to work because I'm like I'm physically shaking cannot move my body cannot drive can't do this but like I find like a way I deal with it is like I try to do the whole like um the five five or six senses thing like uh, it's where you count down how many things uh can you touch, feel, see, um, smell, things mm-hmm. like that, or things like, that ground you in your like current. Yeah, reality. or like throw your throw yourself into the shower. Like my own, my psychologist told me that like when I get heated or if I'm really upset or like it's put yourself in a not a cold cold shower but a cool shower because it also affects your nervous system and it's like that will like cool you down but of course you still have your brain they're telling you stuff and you're just they're like how do I and it's like I don't know I I guess I try to talk about it with certain people like I'm like if especially if it has to do with like me being anxious with other people mm-hmm. or like with just around certain things I try to talk to them and I'm like look this is like I'm feeling this way. I'm being very anxious about this and blah blah. blah. Talking about it helps, or um, writing it down, putting that shit on paper. Everybody get a journal, not a diary. Journaling get a is, journal journaling and is good. journal it down because it, it's like it doesn't solve it, but like but it, it helps, helps put it somewhere else. Yeah, yeah get it out it, of it your helps head. Put it down. Yeah. I don't know. I find like it just helps or like don't distract yourself, but do distract yourself, like distract yourself in good ways, like things that you like doing. But of course, once you're done distracting yourself, there's a chance it will come back. But then you're like, you have to remind yourself like, hey, anxiety can can you chill the fuck out? Like, Bro, that's how I, I, I don't feel know. Like, anytime I'm anxious, I'm just like, can you just leave me alone right now? Like, this is not the time for this, okay? You're not helping. Can you, can you take a seat? Take a seat and take a number because I have some other stuff to do. We got shit to, to do. do. <laughs> it's like, wait. Wait your turn. I know. Don't add and, more stuff onto it. And, like, my brain, I'm sure you know, is, like, always go, go, go. So, in my head, there's, like, that voice is just always there. You know, I'm trying to sleep, and it's there, and I'm trying to, like, do stuff, and it's, like, there. And then, you know, I'm just, like, can you just shush? Sometimes I'm, like, I get to the point where I'm so sick of my own ego and, like, my own, like, anxiety and, like, my own thoughts that I'm just, like, damn, this human life. (laughs) I'm just like it's so constricting i'm just like damn i'm like oh like this is i guess this is what it's like to have a human body and a human experience but it's so funny to me sometimes because i'm just like sometimes i have to laugh at it because i'm like harsha this is a part of being human like yeah. you are a human being like what did you expect was gonna happen this is what we signed up for when we when we left to come down and be bored. I'm like, this we is the ego. That contract, like, Get used to like, it. Yeah. Like, this is... <laughs> and then I'm like, can I just Boy. have an ego death already and just, like, be like, bye-bye for a second so I can have, like, a moment of peace and then we can have a yeah. resurrection and come back down to Earth and be okay again, you know? Right? Oh, bro. It's... Ah. it's it's a lot like I feel like the only time I had like a genuine break from my ego was like so I did this I don't know if you've ever heard of these 
sensory deprivation tanks. I don't know, have you like you know like yeah. in um Stranger Things like she goes into like a so they they do this like for regular people and you can go in there and you pretty much just lay naked in this like salty pod you know kind of like you're mm. just floating in a pool and you lay there and they turn off all the lights and like you can listen to music but I got annoyed by the music so I was just like laying there by my you know just floating around naked in the salt pool in the dark it was kind of like for a moment my ego was like bitch are you serious right now like look at us look at look at look at what you have me doing right now but then I was like bobbing around and like I was hearing my heart beat and then next thing I know I woke up like it was like I woke up from a dream but I had no idea I fell asleep it was like the weirdest sensation ever but it felt like I felt so happy and just so calm and so joyous and so like just in my body and in the presence of being me that it just felt so good and it felt like I had the best sleep of my life like it felt like you know like when you were like in your mommy's womb and everything was nice and yeah, safe I was, and good I was just about to say that's just like, like that. that like pretty much and it was like I think because it was so quiet and because it was dark and warm and I was floating and like I was just hearing my heartbeat it triggered like this state in my consciousness that I didn't even know was there that literally knocked me asleep without my own awareness and it was to the point That's where crazy. I literally had no concept of time passing. Because, like, at least when you sleep, like, you're aware that time is moving. But during yeah. this session, like, I didn't even, like, it felt like I was in there for 10 minutes. And then I woke up and I was like, wait, wasn't I just here 10 minutes? Like, what just happened? Like, I was just like, it was like one of those weird things that you're just really confused on where the time went. Like, it was unreal. But I felt like I had a break from my ego, at least for like that hour, because I was really like unaware. Like a, like, I was completely experience. unconscious. I, and it's like the only time I've ever done it. But what's weird is they say like people, you're not supposed to fall asleep. So like, I thought it was really weird. They were like, yeah, you're not really supposed to fall asleep. Like some people do, but it's not really what happens. And I was like, bro, I literally was knocked to fuck out, unaware. And it was like, yeah. And it was funny because. When the lights came on, I was still in there asleep and they were like, oh, I guess she must really be out like knocked out because she hasn't moved or anything. And I was like, and I like had no aware, like I had no, like it took me a while before I think my body recognized that the lights were on to trigger yeah. me back out into like the conscious world. It was super weird. You were for sure in a whole nother dimension, like... I don't even know. I'm so confused, but I recommend it. I highly recommend doing a de deprivation tank float. It is super relaxing. I absolutely love it, and I cannot wait to do it again. Like, cannot. I, I would love to do one of those things. I've always seen, like, videos about them, and it's They're like, cool. it looks like this egg. And oh, then, this like, one you're, wasn't you're an egg, though. It was egg. like a pool. Oh. Yeah, so it wasn't like I was in an enclosed space. It was like open, ah. but the room was dark. So I I like that better because I don't like the idea of that's being even trapped better. in a yeah in an egg. I'd rather yeah, that, like the a pool. egg thing that seems very like stressful. I feel you. I a hundred percent agree. Like that would give me anxiety. <laughs> Just being in there. Yeah, it's definitely a weird, like, you gotta definitely be comfortable doing it, but I recommend everybody do it because it is so great. And it's not like, it's like, you it's not like a drug, really. Like, it's a natural thing. Like, it's, you know, anybody could do it. It's not like weird. I mean, or technically, the closest thing I might have to that is laying in the ocean at nighttime. Nah, and but the ocean has, like, currents, you know? At least this is like a steady pool so like if True. you had a pool and you just filled it with like salt well it have to be as salty as like the dead sea because you need to float like perfectly and it's like like a great warm temperature i don't know i hope to one day when i have my you know remote living situation that i also have a deprivation tank so that and a sauna so that i can do wellness while I cultivate my garden, my my fruitful agricultural jungle, you know. But yeah, you're definitely more than welcome to come visit my isolated commune. For sure. Likewise, you could come visit mine. I'll have a bunch of dogs and like animals. I don't know which animals yet, but dogs are for sure number one. I feel you. 
dogs are amazing. I love dogs. Like I, hmm. they just they're so just they're, they're, loving. They're so adorable. Like, have you seen the videos going back on this whole consciousness things of animals? Have you seen Bunny? Bunny, the dog that the, that can talk, that communicates with buttons. No, black but I white, do know like, like like scientists train like eight like chimpanzees and stuff to do a bunch of cool stuff. Or like mice can run but, through mazes and they learn. They clearly well, have the capacity I'll, to learn. I'll send you. I'll send you videos of her because it's so adorable. Like she's able to. Like for example, she now has a little sibling called Otter, another mm. dog, which is learning to um to also the use the button and. There's a video where Bunny is looking at herself in the mirror and she's just like staring at herself in the mirror and um her mom is like, That's you, that's you, Bunny and she goes back to the button and like if I just show it to a person randomly, they not might not understand it. But Bunny goes to press on the button, um, no smell where which the, which mm. is basically her saying like, like I, I can't, can't smell, smell the dog. Yeah. Yeah, I can't smell this person. So she's aware that this is a like this a reflection. Like, the reflection. That is yeah. interesting. That is hella interesting. Because yeah, animals look at themselves in the mirror all the time, and you always are like, "Why the hell are you staring at yourself?" But for them, they're like, "I can't smell that other animal." So what the hell is that? That is they're so not 100% interesting. Sure if it's them or not? Yeah. Oh, that is so interesting. But that I think what scientists like say when they think animals don't have consciousness is like they think that they can't recognize themselves versus like like they don't recognize their individuality or like they don't think about when they are like just eating. Like for them, they're like, oh, I have this impulse that is hunger and I need to satisfy it. What scientists are looking at is like they're not thinking that the animal is aware that they're having a hunger experience and as a result go and eat to fill that experience mm-hmm. you know what i mean well, but i feel like I, that's still I a guess. human way of looking at consciousness like that's our ego telling us this is what consciousness must be like yeah. and so if you don't fit this box then it can't be a conscious experience but i think like that's our ego assuming that I we are speaking. this you know better thing than all these other animals and so we feel better about ourselves because we can say we're the king of you know the animal kingdom or whatever uh, we may be we might be but still it's i'm like even if we are the kings and the queens then it should be our responsibility to create this earth and make it a fruitful place for all beings not just humans because it breaks my heart, Emily, anytime I'm driving on the highway and I see a dead animal. Like, I, oh my God, like, I, like, will pray for the animal. Like, as I'm driving by, I will be like, I hope you are resting in peace and that you are no longer suffering and that you're born back with all the, you know, positive, you know, your karmas are washed away because clearly you had to have a lot of karmas to get run over on the highway. Yeah. Poor thing. But it's like, it's like the same here with, like, the dogs and the cats that are just, like, left on the street. Strays, People just don't yeah. bother with the, Yeah, the strays. And then you're just like, bro, really? Like, or, uh, or like, the food industry. We <laughs> the waste food so industry. much food. We literally we waste, waste so much food. Much food. We waste it, that. and then we process it. And then we poison ourselves with the process shit. Like, it just... Exactly. But not only that, but, like, also the, like, meat industry. And it's just, like, it, it hurts to think about it. And Do I'm you like, still eat meat, Emily, or no? I eat chicken. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. I, it, it, I feel you because I completely agree that the meat industry is so terrible. The way that they treat animals is so terrible. And I think, like, as much as I am a meat eater, like, I... I'm very privileged because I can depend on that system. So I don't have to do the dirty work because I know I don't have the capacity to do the dirty work. Like I've seen a chicken get killed and it stopped me from eating chicken for months. Like I cannot kill an animal. It is not within me. I cannot do it. You know, that's why when Will wants to go hunt us elk in the jungle, I'm like, you can go hunt it and, you know, I might eat it, but I can't be involved, you know, because I would feel too bad. Like I would feel so guilty having to kill it, even though I know. I need to eat meat to survive. Yeah. You know? And it is hard, but I think 
because we're human and because we have the capacity to recognize like the role that we have to play and even if we do have to eat meat I think like we should be intentional about it you know what I mean like I think we should all have to play the role in like our intentional experience when we do consume meat considering the fact that we are taking a life and we should be appreciative of the life that was taken for us to be able to have this food and I think the meat industry removes that you know so you aren't aware of how the animals are being treated you are not aware of how they're being slaughtered, how they're being processed. So you don't have to have that. You don't have to weigh that emotional baggage on you. You can just go to the grocery store and pretend like, oh, look at this chicken breast. It's looking so yum, yum. But if you had to be the one to do the work, you probably would feel differently about it. Yeah, you you, for sure. Either uh, I had this conversation with a friend a few days ago and we were both like talking about the meat industry as well. And they were like, you got to be a sociopath. Like, you have to have no empathy or emotions to be able to just kill these animals like this. Like, like, I feel like if it had to come down to it, yes, I would kill an animal for food. But again, at the end of the day, I'm going to give thanks to this animal. and I'm going to give thanks to the universe or God or whoever I feel like giving thanks to within that day. Yeah. For the creation of this animal and to hope that it rests, its life. You know? Yeah, all of that. Yeah. Exactly. But like this whole like the whole industry, how they do it is just like it's it's sad. And then it's, it's like yeah, you can it's, taste it's, the difference from a happy cow and a sad cow. And the thing is is <laughs> like we're all eating unhappy cows. You know what yeah. I mean? Like we're all eating chickens that were kept in like like i don't know barns where they had no space to walk around they're just you know stuck there they're being injected with all of these hormones and to make them bigger and you know chunkier and then we eat that then they die traumatically and then we eat that meat and we don't think that all of that anxiety all of the stress all of the conditions that that chicken experience that goes into the meat that we then consume. Like cortisol is literally a hormone that courses through your body. You know, chickens have it. We have it. You trigger it. It will impact the meat without a doubt. And yet we consume that and don't think that that has any influence on our health, our mental state, any of that. Just, I struggle because I'm like, uh, and I feel like St. Martin would be such a perfect place to practice this self-sustaining lifestyle. Like, it would be so perfect. So perfect. It like, is, we literally have the best temperature. Even if our soil the is trash, these are all fixable issues. You know what I mean? Like, these are all fixable things. We have yeah. technology. We can solve well, this. We have, the, we have the space for this. We, and we imagine, have the like, space. every we home have had its we own have little garden its own little chickens and, you know, cows or whatever. And then people trade amongst each other. That's much better than us importing everything and hoping that what we're getting is of quality to meet the the needs of our people. Quality and of of, of price. Because when you go grocery shopping, yo, the other day I went grocery shopping and I think I went for like four or five things. Mm. And that was like that was thirty forty dollars right there. Yeah, groceries is. Expensive. And I was like, are you? I was like, are you serious, bro? I was like, no, 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 take some stuff back. I'm just gonna go with my apples and my peanut butter. Like, I'm good. <laughs> That's the cheapest thing. Like, let, let's go, let's go. Like, no, but like we have the like. This is that's something I was very strong about last year. Like with a lot of adults, um, during um after lockdown. Because we saw what COVID did to us. We saw what Irma did to us. And it's like we rely heavily on um, the tourist industry. And it's like, uh, I, I get that. I understand that. But, like, why do we keep building these huge-ass villas? Hotels. Not villas, but, like, hotels. Or why do we keep, like, we have this land. You could simply use this land. To have livestock. Like we have, I think, a couple of farms that may do livestock. We already have some people that do eggs, like our own. We have our own eggs here, finally. Um, we have a lot of farms that do like uh, 
the fruits and the vegetables yeah. and they're really they're really good like fresh stuff but it's like if we could get a couple acres a good amount of land in like three different places or i don't know rather than giving it to all these like foreigners who come in they're building like condos Preach. and apartments for Preach. yeah like for for other people that aren't even from SM, that don't that even care about the island SM. that are literally just exactly. there so they can gallivant and live they you know tropical fantasies exactly like um uh, we we would be doing good because guess what we could sustain our own uh food industry here we can also sell to neighboring islands Preach. rather than having to wait for everything to come down and then on top of that when shit goes and hits the fan and which let's it say we always go on another doing. lockdown it, which always happens guess what we don't have to wait for containers of food to come in and we don't have to go to Carrefour or to Daily Extra or to wherever and then buy food that's going to expire within two days Precisely. or that's already moldy. Yeah, because it had to be flown moldy. here, shipped here, you know, like, and that stuff all takes time, which exactly impacts the freshness of the food, impacts nutrition, all of that. And and St. Martin is literally the perfect place to start this. Like, I'm just like, I hate, bro. I hate our government. It's just, maybe, maybe oh, it's just me out. Speaking about government, speaking about government, today's 10-10. <laughs> is it? Is today 10-10-10? Yeah, today's 10-10. You're 10, right. 10. I did not. Ha- yeah, happy- for folks that listen to this, this will be in the future, but we recorded it. Yeah. Happened to record this on ten ten ten. Yeah, on oh ten ten. Ha- happy birthday, Samartin, for uh, for nothing. Independent. On- happy independence that got us nowhere. Uh, again, that that wasn't even fully independent. Independent. You exactly. were still holding uh, someone's hand. <laughs> I mean, we bro. I we couldn't even vote in that, and I haven't even voted ever. So I'm just like Same. irritated. But I'm just like, why? Why? Uh, my my thing is is like every time they do decide to do like these voting things they just decide out of nowhere to, and i'm like i can't they're even like government vote. fell so let's vote again they're like yeah well, yeah here you go vote again and it's like bro um i live dutch side but i don't have a dutch passport so i can't vote i have to like do all this paperwork in order to vote Dang. but Wait, then like by the do you have time, a french like, passport yeah oh okay okay and it's like I'm like I'm like I don't even have enough time to like decide, so I'm just here like uh okay <laughs> I I guess this is just how how it's gonna Bro. go. I mean, who like, would I even vote for? I'm like most of them suck at what they do, or most of them don't even do anything. So it's like who would I even vote for? There's like maybe one party with potential. The rest of them, I'm just like what yeah. what are you even here for? Y'all have been here <laughs> since before I came out the womb, and y'all are still here not doing sure. shit anything you're not fixing anything but like, you take besides, a six-figure salary okay very convenient yeah. besides all those cons sm is still a, a beautiful a great place i love it's the island. beautiful place it's it makes my heart place. feel so like i feel so like loved on the island like it's a weird thing like i just feel so relaxed and so like at home and at peace and like seen and recognized and just like understood you know it's it's weird Mm -hmm. like i mean you lived in europe for a bit but i don't know how it was like compared to the island but at least like in the states it's like america is so diverse and there's just so many different people that but it's not like back home you know i feel like here people get offended very easily whereas like back home you could say some whack ass shit but at least you know we can laugh about it and like have fun and discuss yeah. it and not get upset you know and still be friends at the end of the day here it's like you can't say anything and the minute you say anything it's like a gun to your head Cancel- like and this is the country of freedom of speech like i don't understand yeah i don't get it that's the but that has to fall on cancel culture i hate cancel culture so much Bro, i same. like i don't it's care stupid. who is listening it's mob to this. mentality cancel it's culture ridiculous is dumb it's dumb. It shouldn't be cancel culture. It should be, it should be hold educate. you accountable culture. Yeah. Like, 
just hold you hold accountable, you accountable like, have educated conversations educa- ed- yeah but don't be but so no. quick to cancel a person like and get offended by it like uh, like people say offensive things but it's like okay who are you to say that you're entitled to a life where you're never allowed to be offended like people are not allowed okay. to offend you like that's not a human experience i'm sorry like everybody yeah. no matter if you're white black purple gray everyone gets offended at some point in time because there are going to be people that disagree with you there are going to be people that don't look at the world you, the way you do For and sure. if you're going to be a part of this civilization get used to being offended that doesn't mean like something is wrong it just means maybe we have to have a conversation oh. Oh. Yep. Pull up your but. big person pants, put on that belt, and and, and have a it. conversation. Like, just don't exactly. cry have and be mad and just throw a tantrum and be like, "I don't want to talk about this. You hurt my feelings, and so I just want you to be removed because I can't deal with your perspective and I can't debate you on your perspective. So the only way to win this conversation is to bulldoze you and dominate. Like, I don't know how that helps anybody it's mob mentality it's censorship like that literally goes against freedom and you're like all about like the, and the people that are usually like perpetuating cancel culture are the ones that they claim are fighting for freedom it's yeah. very ironic it's very very ironic <laughs> yeah uh, i don't know i i think in europe like i never dealt with people who are so easily offended because you know europeans are, are blunt in france and Yo, they're blunt, and everyone's like, they go to France, or they go to Holland, they're like, yo, they're so rude. I was like, it's not that they're really rude, it's Good. just like... I like rude people. At least they're honest. Yeah, at least they're honest, but they're like, they're very fucking straightforward, and the thing That's is, it's like they're not doing it in a way to like, offend you, or be rude to you. That's just like, that's just how it is. Like, sometimes I worry when my mom makes jokes, because my mom makes like, some fuck jokes, or she says like she says like real like blunt shit and then like people are watching her and she, and it's like she's and then she just Hello, like, Sophie, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah and then i have to tell sometimes i'm like yo she's joking like don't worry and she doesn't she's mean joking. that then, just like, don't take it seriously like, she's just fucking around like yeah uh, that's it's, hilarious it's, Oh no, it's like I spoke to uh, an American at the airport since I work airport and I meet a lot of people. Yeah. Um this one yeah, this woman was like, Yeah, I'm this Dutch guy, he was so rude to me and I was like, No, like I was like, that's Yeah, yeah like that's a common are. I was like, That's just how Dutch people are. She was yeah, he was so adamant that uh, like I told him I stopped smoking cigarettes and he's like, Oh, Oh, just take it. Like, oh, why do you have to be so boring? Blah, blah, blah. And she was so <laughs> upset about him pushing it onto her. I'm and dying. I was just there, like, I was like, I'm like, bro, that's just how Dutch people joke. Like, I'm. Take it, I'm dude. Like, I was like, yeah, they can be rude, but, like, that's just how they You're talk. You're not meant to like, get that's offended, how they yeah. Joke. Like, you shouldn't like, be offended. If you get offended, then, like... Then damn. you're really misunderstood. But, like, people that get offended at comedians, to me, are the most hilarious people. Because I'm like, you are really delusional. Because it's yeah. a comedy special. The point is for you to, one, laugh about shit that you couldn't otherwise talk about because people are so sensitive about it. If you can't make a joke then we have failed as a civilization. I don't want to live in a civilization where yeah. we can't make jokes. Like, Yeah, no. I, d- I just want people to, like, understand, like, there's a difference between, um, again, yeah, just making a joke and actually, like, being serious about it. And, yeah. like, fall, it's like, the intention. And agreeing with what you said. Yeah, the yeah, intention. Exactly. Like, but I guess it also depends on, like, what kind of joke you make because like if you make a real 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 fucked up joke nah i I don't i don't know bro it depends yeah it really depends like it some jokes are like maybe that's a little too far but i feel like for most things like there should be no topic on this earth that you should not be able to make a joke about because i feel like that's what jokes are for because they're meant to de like remove the tension you know in an otherwise maybe stressful situation 
And they're supposed to be a way for us to kind of like poke at like shit in society. And, you know, and if we can't do that in the safe space of comedy, then it's like we'll never be able to have tough conversations because yeah, people will get just offended and then don't want to talk, which is like that's not effective communication either. Yeah, no, it's not. It's like a means of control. And I'm anti-control. Yep, again. Fuck the system! <laughs> It's funny. I it's funny though because like okay, so I have a question. Like this could be our last question because I know we're we've been on here for a bit. But so say the system collapsed, right? Like for whatever we say, society was like, okay, I have had it. Screw capitalism. Screw government. Screw the banking institution. Screw all of it, right? Screw education. The education system. Screw the legal system. Fuck this. We don't want to work anymore. We just want to. I don't know. Do whatever the hell. What do we do? Like, I guess, like, how, how would you, I don't even know how I'm trying to frame this. I guess, like, my thing is, like, how are you, how are you going to survive the apocalypse that arises when the system collapses? You know what I mean? Like, how, like, how are you going to write out the apocalypse that comes as a result of it? Damn. Um... I mean, I feel like you're safe on the island, though. Say, Martin, nobody coming there. (laughs) Exactly. No, ain't nobody coming here. But if we have people here, like act up, that is just like you're kind of also stuck. <laughs> uh, the first thing that came to my mind was like, I'm gonna do me. Like, I'm I'm gonna just do me. I ain't gonna bother nobody. Like, like if you come to bother me, okay, yeah, I'm gonna do what I have to do. Like, depending how you're bothering I'm gonna me, defend like, I'm gonna my homestead. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna defend my. My space, like, hell no. Oh, well, hell yes. But, like, that's a really good question. I never thought about that. Because um, I feel like a lot of people will be like, fuck the system. But then I'm like, okay, so what are you going to do when the system collapses? Like, are we system, just going to yeah, cry because the police I, aren't going to come and save you now? Or, like, are you going to be like, okay, well, let me strap up and get ready for the purge? You know what I mean? Wait, <laughs> like, that, but what is happening? But that's a sad, you know, that's a sad thing, though. Like, people are so quick to just be like, let me strap up It'll and go. It'll turn and, violent, like, yeah. Like, why do we have to turn violent? Like, And for you know what? why, though? Because if you look at, like, cities that have, like, a lot of, um, like, drug lords and, like, a lot of gang violence, and, like, you hear from people that are involved in, like, these types of lifestyles, like, it seems like people love guns because it gives them a sense of, like, power. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they feel like, you can't fuck with me if I have this AK strapped to my back. And so I feel like if we, you know, if the system were to collapse and we didn't necessarily have, like, police or military that could potentially crack down on folks like that, then you have these people that have all of these weapons because they have them. You know, they have them in their position right now. And now they don't have any... Um, infrastructure to hold them accountable against using their weapons so now they can like you know like in you know mexico where the cartel pretty much runs most of the cities we would end up in a situation where we have sort of like a the ultimate drug lord or kingpin trying to use fear and intimidation to regain control of a population and that is like my only concern with like the system falling because you'll have people that want to become the new dictator when that's like not what the whole point of the system collapsing is about. The point of it is more for us to become unified and be more of like a utopia and, and like a globalized yeah. society in a sense where there isn't necessarily one person in control, but we are all playing our part to have this society function optimally. You know? a, coll- a whole collective of uh, a community of family. Like create a yeah, like where we all do bro. things because we want to help each other because we want to better each other because we all want to be our best selves. Like, because to me, like yeah. the ultimate replacement to the system is like a world where we're all like, where we have accepted that we are like beings of frequency, you know, and we're like trying to become enlightened and we are self sustaining and we do things that are in alignment with our ecosystem instead of like 
necessarily like doing all of these unsustainable processes to like harvest material and stuff but more so like we live in alignment with how nature works because we are a part of nature but i feel like when we do that though like that's a world where getting the latest iphone may not be priority and then we're yeah. like having a new netflix special may not be a priority i think it would be because there are going to be people out there that are naturally creative and naturally want to build and you know do things but it would be a different world it, it sure. really would but i'm open to it you know i'm open to other formations of expression of human civilization i I just think it sucks sometimes because like we're stuck on this path and it seems like we can't go backwards and try to fix things or change things like we are just churning forward and i'm like wait maybe this is not even the path to regress you think so yeah we can regress if a if a meteor came down to earth and destroyed everything we would be Majorly regressed. You know, it's funny that you brought up a meteor because I've been seeing these videos of people in the States. They've been, I don't know, they've been fine, like, they've been seeing these things flying out of the, the sky, but, like, not, like, meteors. I don't know you what mean, they like, are. like, UFOs? Like, not, I, I wouldn't call it a UFO, but there was just one video where it's, like, this bright thing just coming down, and then you see three others just shoot down and they're like oh my god what is that and people commented on it this is what the dinosaurs were thinking when the meteor came to <laughs> earth and it's like we like, are doing that? exactly like the dinosaurs we're gonna watch it come down and we're gonna be like oh my god oh, what shit. is that Doop. done it's over yeah exactly <laughs> it's like oh shit, jonathan you good <laughs> tragic <laughs> jesse no i mean there has been like a lot of like ufo stuff lately you know like in the press and in the media i'm all for aliens coming to earth but i just right? hope that they're not like the predator type and they're more like y'all are dumb let us teach you yeah I, but i feel I like why it's... would they do that like why would oh. the aliens be nice to us we're well, not even nice to ourselves so, like well, in actually, because like, if you really want to go into it, like, you have the Galactic Federation, which is like the Galactic Federation would be, I guess. <laughs> like, oh, they, so you're saying they, like there already is a Galactic Federation, and they yeah, know about they, Earth, but they're like they just haven't come to us yet because they're like, yeah, they're they're not ready. But they they do contact like people. They talk to people because we are like those who are, I guess very open and um into their higher self they're able to communicate with them and like that's how they Ooh. give the information to us and like and they're able to tell us like so do you bro, think like humans like yeah do you think our ideas are like whisperings of the aliens i i feel like it is possible like, like why not or like the iphone you know <laughs> you yes maybe like again this i i have no doubt that a lot of uh technology we have probably came from like alien communication it it is possible that like we a lot of the technology we have or that has been used within war or within flying or whatever it it, it is possible that like we received it through communication communications of other beings i know like dave lazar's whole like alien thing was about like how in like s4 which is like another area 51 pretty much where they mm -hmm. had like all of this advanced technology but they he knew for a fact there was no way that humans built it like there was just no like there was nothing like this I anywhere think I want and like I, yeah there was I one of like it. the scanning devices it was like a biometric scanner that the aliens used or that the facility used and it became like public information that this was actually a scanner used and like all of his story for me checks out like everything that this dude has said they have been able to validate minus the alien part you know because that's the mm -hmm. that's where the conspiracy comes in but bro 
I am like, I don't know. if the if the Galactic Federation is out there and they can pick up on this frequency, please send an ambassador to your girl because I am all, I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, tell please. me the truth. Please, please talk to us. I don't know. I guess the reason why, like, we aliens haven't come down like that is because a lot of people would freak out. They wouldn't know how to... But that's good. I love disruption. Disruption pushes society forward. Like as much as COVID's terrible, at least it pushed us in some direction yeah. forward. You know, I feel like we've been stagnant, just living every day. I'm ready, bro. I'm ready for the aliens to come yeah. down. I I don't care. I feel like why should people be afraid of aliens? We're not afraid of any other animal on this planet. So why would we be afraid of them? I think the concern is more of like if they are out there and they could get to us then they must have technology that's more powerful than our own. And then the ego comes in and, you know, militaries are like, yeah. we have to conquer them. Otherwise, they're going to conquer us. And it's like, why is this a, like, why do we have to fight? Like, why is this like, we got to fight them? Why can't it be? Yeah. Let's collaborate. Like, I don't understand why humans are so quick to violence when I'm like, wouldn't it be better? Like, we work better when we just collaborate with each other. I don't understand why we feel the just need to have to kill each and other. Like, it peace. doesn't help anybody. Like, we should literally just have them and just invite them in and just sit down and have some tea with like, them and up? discuss. Yeah, and just be, be like, like, so, so what, is what did there? you think about season six of uh, Earth? And it's like, what's happening on your planet? Like, can yeah. we... Can we get a idea? Can you help us stop this child bickering we have amongst our species? Because it's childish. <laughs> it it really cool. is. I'm so ready for the aliens. I'm like, can y'all just tell us? Because clearly we are lost. Do you think humans are aliens? And they were like, we were dropped here. And we're like the only ones yeah. of our kind. Yes. But the thing I, is, why don't we so, have memory of being brought here? Like, why why would we want to erase that? Well, okay, so, like, in things that I've researched or, like, mm. I've looked into and, like, it all falls back into the whole, like, when we decide, like, there's theories that we, we choose the families we want to be born into. And that's because, like, whether in our last, pa our past life or whether you're a new soul you are agreeing to certain things and you when you come down to earth you agree to forget all these things so you can mm. relearn it to re so because if you already know it then it's just kind of like it's easy but it's like to relearn anything. it exactly and it's like i no doubt like i remember when i did reiki when i was 16 or 17 um cool. i never knew so you yeah, did so reiki that's dope. Well, I didn't do it. I had it done on me. I was okay, like, okay. I was doing it to help with like my depression because mm. like my mom was like, oh, we need to figure it out because nothing is helping. <laughs> and we're like, okay, let's go. Um, the woman was like, you're, you're a star seed. And I was like, okay, I didn't know what that was. And basically star seeds are like um, people who their souls are not from earth like you can be from earth but you're also like you have indigo children you have i think rain is it rain children interesting i can't remember right now but like you have different types and it's like you come from different um uh star star systems or planets and you it's because you came down to earth to help the collective wake up and heighten the frequency and it's like there's actually a lot of us but it's like we don't even realize it that that we are this we're in this human just... incarnation yeah and so you have to retrain yourself and realize why emily you're not just a regular human emily like you've got a larger purpose you know what i mean like yeah exactly hard. but then when you when you talk to like normies about it they're like oh uh, what what you're a like, psycho <laughs> Yeah, Somebody go get know. her. She's a witch. She's a witch. Burn her <laughs> at the stake. <laughs> like, I might just burn you from a distance. Just go like this and then you set on the fire. The karmic laws will backfire if you dare hurt me, peasant. Exactly. Car karma karma will, will get you, you know, like. 
But I feel like, yeah, there are already aliens that live here, like actual aliens that live among us, because like you have different types of species. And I think, is it the... They're called the Nordics. Is it the Nordics? They're like very tall, very pale, blonde and blue eyes. So they basically look like people from... Um, Isn't that like the... the the people that the Hitler Pleiadians? was trying to perpetuate, what's it called? The Aryans? Uh, the Aryans, yeah. Um, Even though yeah, it, his, by the way, like for people that don't know, like Hitler's, Hitler stole Aryans from, like he stole so much shit from Indian culture and then pretty much just turned it all upside down and made it like this toxic, disgusting evil. Like Aryans were actually yeah. the... The people that invaded India, like back, 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 back in the day, um, and they like created the whole like caste system in India and everything. And like the swastika is actually like a Hindu symbol, but then yeah, Hitler went and made it all evil. Yeah, like, Rachel so used to come over you... to my store and be like, "Why do you have swastikas everywhere?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I promise you, <laughs> we're not anti Jews. <laughs> this is just <laughs> prayer and blessings." <laughs> Yeah. Continue, continue. <laughs> oh my god, no. You try to draw, not draw out, but like, you see the actual, the symbol you're talking about, because I know it, it has a dot between yeah. the things. People are like, oh, why? Are you, are you about Hitler? And it's like, no. Like, no, bro. This is an Indian idea. Hitler book? just stole it. Yeah, like. That's the thing. Like, that's why I can't deal with the internet sometimes and people on it because I'm like, y'all don't even know shit. But you make opinions and statements about stuff that you know nothing about. And they're somehow like, I'm just convince gonna listen other to people. You. Yeah. They're like, I'm it's just ridiculous. gonna listen to what you have to say and then form my opinion rather than like, let me listen to you and then do some research and then form my opinion. It's like, let me form exactly. my opinion first. And then, like, you know, get offended or offend you or, like, yeah. say mean and things. Then and then you. after. Yeah, and then cancel you. And then after they do their research, they're like, oh, I was oh. wrong. And then not apologize. <laughs> and they're like. Not apologize. Oh. And just be like, oh, yeah, like, a- I guess he wasn't that bad. <laughs> but you were saying you're a star seed. You're a star seed. And. Oh, and- yeah. I, I got, I got. Okay. Um, so yeah, she, she was like, you're a star seed. And I was very confused by it. And she was like, yeah, that meaning like, you know, my, my soul isn't from like here that I've been here for some time and I felt it before. And I've actually, um, I think in a meditation once and, um, with somebody else, I started crying and I don't know what happened with them, but they said that you're going to go home soon. And it made me cry because like, you know, uh I've constantly said I want to go home and especially when I'm like you know <laughs> sure Schleider um I I say I want to go home but it's not like yeah home is SM but like home for me always felt like it was not here home is somewhere else and like when I when I now say home I picture it and it's not here it's it's like this it's this out world there. another yeah out there another world that's like bright and it's filled with water and blue and that like and i i think that might be serious b or serious a because we have all these other yeah star systems that like we came down into and but yeah i wish i wish i did the reiki more often i stopped because i was like this is intense and I was like, and then after, like last year in quarantine, when I started opening up more to it, I wanted to go and see her again and do Reiki, like, and um, have Reiki done on me. And I actually do want to get certified in doing Reiki as well. That would um, be lit. But it, it really would. But sh- I think she she left, and I couldn't do it. And I was like, no, oh, I have Damn. a lot of questions. I yeah. need answers like too. i wasn't ready then but i'm ready now <laughs> where'd you go now? i honestly back. is it weird i have like this weird like it's weird because it's like you know when you know something but you don't know why you know it you just know it you know that feeling yeah i feel yeah. like for some Intuition. reason 
I have this intuition and like, I'm just, you know, I'm sharing this with you. <laughs> I hope people on this don't think I'm crazy, but I have this weird intuition because I, I honestly also felt like I, I'm like, I'm an older soul and I've been told this like a lot throughout my life. And like, even when I was born, like my mom, like tells the story all the time when I was born, I didn't even cry. Like I was mm-hmm. ready. Like I, my eyes were wide open. Like I was prepared to be born. Like I was like, finally you guys got me out of here like I have been waiting you know and throughout like my life I always even felt like as much as I agree St. Martin is my home like I never really felt like I had a home on earth like it was weird like I never felt like as much as I love this planet it's like more of like I felt like I chose to come and experience this place yeah more so than like I'm just a human being as part of a society it, I do have like this weird feeling like like you said like you come here with a higher purpose to help help at least our collective um civilization recognize that we might be on the wrong path and we we should probably we have all of the power within us to change if we only looked within ourselves and it's weird because it's like I was born into a biracial household in a Caribbean island you know in the middle of nowhere and yet it always like even when I was a kid, I always believed in energy. Like I always believed like that was the fundamental truth. And it was weird because nobody around me was telling me this. I just knew it. Like I knew it. Mm-hmm. Like I just know. Like this was the truth to me. And it was weird because I remember one time I was on the boardwalk and I I was a kid and I was just like I was like looking for a sign from the universe. And I was like, I really 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 want a sign and I looked up at the stars and I saw a shooting star like kid you not like I was like holy shit did I just see that and not only did my wish come true even though it was a kind of silly wish for a child but it was like I saw this and then like you were saying with like the meditation like I was once in this um meditation class uh with a bunch of other students and there was this one girl in the class who she was very much like someone that was very attuned to things you know like but not Mm -hmm. stuff that like regular like she was attuned to the other world you know she was attuned to stuff that you and I couldn't see and she would like very openly talk about this in class even though like she was just around other students you know that could very much have been judging her and been like this bitch is crazy and I remember one time we were like meditating in class and I finally had the courage to talk to her because I was like Like, this girl is, like, intriguing to me. Like, what is it about? Like, what is she seeing? And I was talking to her, and I was like, oh, yeah, like, you're, like, I would love to, like, learn more about you and stuff. And she was like, yeah, by the way, like, you have one of the strongest energies in this room. I was like, what do you mean? She was like, yeah, when we were meditating, she was like, there was a beam of light literally on Mm. you, like, like, going directly to you. And she was like, the only other person in this room that had that was the teacher. And I was like bro what and she was like yeah like and it's crazy like it is so weird because anytime I meditate Emily I kid you not I feel the energy like in my head like I can feel it flowing through me and it's one of the weirdest sensations I've ever had in my life because I used to think meditation was a joke and it's just like now I'm like super curious because I really believe like when I think about what is my purpose on this earth I honestly believe it's to change how we are as a civilization. Like, I don't want to just be, you know, someone that works a job. Like, I want to be a visionary, someone that changes humanity for us to see how much better we can live and how much better we can treat each other. And I like, it's weird because like now that I work at Microsoft, I had the pleasure, like just spontaneously to have this conversation with a designer at Microsoft. And he was talking to me just about like um he his family does like are into sports and they met this per- like a trainer and he does work with energy and like frequency and like basically um measuring like your body's resistance to frequency to determine what's wrong with you and it, he was like yeah it's incredibly accurate to the point where it can tell you not only your mental state, it can tell you like nutritional deficiencies. It can tell you if you have energy blockages in your body. And I was like, this is literally the work that is going to disrupt the world. Like this is to me what the future is all about. And to me, like 
understanding energy and the frequency and understanding our role in that and how we can work with that to me is the future. And it is so weird, like how you run into people and like the conversations that you have with people, because I feel like I honestly right now feel really in line with my higher self. Like it is so I don't even know how to explain it. But I just have this <laughs> feeling that I'm on the right path. And like, I've been yeah. seeing so many angel numbers, like it is creeping me out how frequently I am seeing these angel numbers. Like, I'm not so even trying to crazy. look for them. I'm not even trying to look for them. And they keep They're showing up over and over and over. And it's like so weird. And I don't know what is going on. I really don't know. But I just, oh, I just feel like like this conversation feels like it's right. Like it was meant to happen right now today. And I'm yeah, so excited. It for sure like, was. Ugh, like it's weird, but it feels so right. And it's like, it's, it's, I don't know, man. I don't know what it is, but I, I agree. I have this weird feeling too, that I am also like a star seed, you know, but nobody's ever told me that. And I don't know what the fuck is up with life, but that's how I feel. I feel like there's no doubt that you're probably a star seed. Like, you don't, I feel like you don't need someone to tell you that. Like, you already can. But I feel like so many of us on the island, that's the thing that I think was weird is I feel like there's a lot of us on St. Martin, especially, that I feel like are star seeds. And I don't understand. I agree with that. Like, why, like, like, I, like, I think Bianca's a star seed low key. Like, I really do believe that. I, I think there's other people out there oh, that are sure. star seeds, and I just don't know why. Like, I don't know if it's like, what was it about St. Martin that made us be born there? But I think it's really convenient that we were all born yeah. there. Like, it's just so weird. Like, oh, I, I, mm. yo, um, we were, we were all up there. Like, we're gonna meet at this location and we're going to be born within all these times and we're all going to like talk to each other but we won't remember any of this you know we what won't i mean remember it we'll come but back it's to so it so weird maybe like, one day yeah it's like it's weird but it's like it's it feels like it's true and i don't know if it's like me just maybe trying to convince myself of truth but it's weird but like you said, I'm like also yeah. hella sus of everything that I'm also like, I could be wrong and I could totally be fine with that. And I could just be a regular, regular, regular human being who dies and my body just returns to the soil and I'm okay with that. But I feel like at least in this life, I might as well try, like you said, you know, yeah, you might exactly. as well try. Because you might never as well know. Try. And, and, it, and it doesn't hurt to like think you're a starseed because if you just think you're a normal human being then it's just like but then it's like i sometimes like me being the sus person i am i'm like are you creating a god complex for yourself harsha i'm like are you trying to say you're god and then i'm like no that's not what i'm no. saying i mean i mean we're all god we all hold god within us we do we, we are, do like, we all are all I manifestations was... of god exactly exactly <laughs> like if if we go and we like say like again like all the way back to the beginning of this like you're like we're waiting for an answer from god it's like we don't need to wait for the answer we the don't. answer is within us it's just it's just like a matter of like trying to like learn the way look within go, exactly with, yeah look within to get those answers or sometimes we don't even need the answers we just need to stay in that 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 field of like that state of flow, curiosity. Yeah. yeah, and and state of flow. Like we don't always need to know. We just yeah. It's that's just another good thing I realized that. in my practice is like maybe you are not supposed to get the answer, and that's okay. And you have but, to yeah. be okay with like not being able to get the answer. And I think it's interesting because I believe like I believe our human body is a vehicle to have a spiritual experience and then I think like there's things that we can do like Reiki like yoga like meditation that charges up your body like how you know the sunlight charges up crystals and when we yeah. do that when we're in a state of flow when we've charged up our body to be able to withstand and store this energy so that we can then have like this unique and mind-boggling conscious experience that's when we see truth. But I think for most of us, like, like we're distracted, you know, by toys, by 
by shows, by drugs, by food, by sex, by all of this extra shit that it distracts us from that truth, which is like, this is the truth of who we are, and it's all within us. We don't have to look elsewhere. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Chatterbox. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to show your support by subscribing to this podcast and leaving us a review. Follow us on Instagram at the.chatterbox for teasers and updates.